The five lemma is a lemma from homological algebra that we will encounter many times. Let's look at its statement. You're given two rows of modules, R modules over ring R, or just the beading groups, doesn't matter, A, B, C, D, E, and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime. And you're given maps such that you get a commutative diagram you have an epimorphism from A to A prime, isomorphisms from B to B prime and D to D prime, and a monomorphism, so an injective map from E to E prime, so that everything commutes and we have exact rows. And then the conclusion is that the middle arrow is also an isomorphism. And the proof of this five lemma can be divided into two parts. First part is proving the surjectivity of the red arrow and that involves the monomorphism here and the isomorphisms, but not the epimorphism. And then dually, you prove the injectivity of the red arrow, and that involves the epimorphism and the isomorphisms, but not the monomorphisms. So since it's really a dual proof, um, we only prove the surjectivity part. And for that, we start by drawing the diagram again in giving us an arbitrary element in C prime. So the proof is something called diagram chase. And a diagram chase is a proof that doesn't involve a lot of text. It mainly involves us moving around in the diagram. Okay, so the hooked arrow indicates injectivity, the, the double headed arrow indicates the surjectivity. It's our usual uh, notation. Okay, let's give us an element in here and we indicate an element in C prime by this gray dot. Our task is to find a pre-image in C. What can we do? Well, at this point, we only can move this element forward to D prime. So let's do that. And then at that point, we, can, we have two choices. We can go further to E prime, but we know what happens then. The rows are exact, so this element will be moved to the zero element in E prime because it comes from C prime. We can also look at the preimage of this element in D. And there's a unique preimage because this arrow was an isomorphism. What can we do to this element in D? Well, at that point, we can only move it to E and maybe move that further down. And since the whole diagram, in particular, the right-hand square of this diagram commutes, this element in E will be mapped to zero in E prime. But remember, the arrow from E to E prime was injective. So that element up here was already zero. Let's, a, let's put a zero here. And that's the situation so far. Now we use the exactness at D. This element is moved to zero, meaning it comes from C. That element in C is in general not unique. I mean, we have to pick a pre-image but there is one by exactness. Now, to orient ourselves in this diagram, let's draw the original element, the element for which we seek a pre-image in black. Now, what are the chances that this element that we have now in C up here is a pre-image of the black element? It's our best guess so far, but the chances are not so good because, as I said, this element in C was given by a choice. We had to choose a pre-image. So different choices um, might be mapped to different elements in C prime. So it's not very likely that this is already a pre-image of the black element. But in any case, we can move it down and get an element which Maybe I draw this in blue. And what we can say about this blue element is that by the commutativity of the diagram, 
this is at least mapped to the same element in D prime as the black element. Which means that if we look at the difference of the black and the blue element, so let me draw the, the difference here, black minus blue, this is then mapped to zero. And exactness at C prime gives us an element or says that there is an element in B prime that is mapped to the difference element. And for that element in B prime, we can find a pre-image and there is now a unique pre-image because there is an isomorphism here. mapping to this element in B prime. So let's again do the only thing we can do. So the only thing we can do at this stage is mapping this further to an element in C. And this element in C is by commutativity being mapped to the difference element. So now there are many elements in here. Let's draw a little circle around the difference element. And maybe color this a little bit. Now you see the difference element in here in C prime is somehow the defect um, for this element in C being a pre-image of the original black element. But if we correct this element now by adding this element, then their sum will be mapped to the sum of the blue, uh, sorry, of the black element and this difference element. But this sum, the black element, oh, sorry, <laughs> I made a mistake. This element is mapped to the blue element and this element is mapped to this difference element. Therefore, if I correct this element by adding this element, so I take the sum of these, this is then mapped to the sum of the difference element and the blue element, and this is the black element. All right, so let's build uh, the right element now by taking the sum of these two. Uh, let's take another color, which take red. So this red circle element is mapped to the sum of the blue element and this orange difference element and therefore it is mapped to the black element. So the, this red circle element is the desired pre-image of the arbitrary element that we gave ourselves in C prime. So we showed that the error from C to C prime is a subjective error.